Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is Isaac, and today I'm going to help you assemble your 8 by 12 and a half foot outdoor storage shed. Before we get started, make sure the model number of your shed is listed in the description below. This video will follow the steps outlined in the assembly manual that comes with your shed. So if you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description below for a timestamp associated with each step. There are steps in this assembly that require two people, so make sure you have at least one other adult available to help. Before we get into the assembly process, Let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You may want to pause the video now so you can gather the supplies shown on the screen. Also, you may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be careful not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. You'll also need additional tools to prepare a foundation for your shed. So refer to your manual to see what other resources you will need. All lifetime sheds require a foundation to be built on. We recommend building your foundation out of concrete but you can also use lumber. This video is meant to be a companion to the assembly manual and not a direct placement. So for the best results, have the manual on hand as you complete the build. It is also crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions of this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. This section goes over the requirements for the foundation of your shed. This video will focus on the assembly of the shed and not the foundation. So refer to your manual in section one to see how to properly build a foundation for your shed. If you have any other questions regarding the foundation of your shed, please feel free to reach out to our customer service team at the number below. Take a gutter channel and line up the holes in the end with the holes in the connector piece. Then secure the hardware. Be careful not to over tighten this hardware. You don't want the cap nuts to break. Line up the holes at the end of the truss brace with the holes in the middle of the gutter channel and secure the hardware, making sure the head of the bolt is inside the gutter. To make tightening this hardware easier, I like to use a Phillips head and a pair of vice grips. Insert the truss rod through the connector and truss brace, secure with the nut on each end. Only tighten until the truss rod doesn't wiggle. Repeat the previous steps three more times for a total of four truss assemblies.
Take the gable halves that don't have a curve at the bottom, line them up in the center, and secure the hardware. Line the holes in the screen with the holes in the vent, place on the front of the gable, and secure the hardware on the back. Take the gable halves that have a curve from the bottom, line them up in the center, and secure the hardware. Line with holes in the screen with the holes in the vent. Place the screen on the front of the gable and secure the hardware in the back. Take the smaller square tube and insert a square cap into each end. Take the square tube, place it onto the gable, make sure the dimple holes are against the gable and the dimple hole in the center is at the bottom of the gable. Secure the tube to the gable, starting with the hardware in the center. Then finish securing through the remaining holes. Take the left door, the one with the Lifetime logo, and line up these holes in the tube with these holes in the door, and then insert the tube in the bottom of the door. Before sliding the tube all the way in, Insert a square cap at the bottom of the tube and then finish sliding the remainder of the way. Add the latch bracket to the front of the door, oriented like this, then secure the hardware, but only finger tighten for now. Locate these dimples at the bottom and top of the door, and drill them out with the provided drill bit, but only go through the first layer of metal. At the bottom of the door, place a spacer over the holes you just drilled out, making sure you can read the word down. Place the lock over the spacer, oriented like this, and secure the hardware.
Repeat the previous steps at the top of the door, except this time make sure you can read the word up. Connect the two halves of the handle together, place on the front of the door and secure the hardware in the back. Insert a hinge tube into the opposite edge of the door, making sure to leave a few inches hanging out on each side. Take the right door and line these holes in the square tube with these holes in the door. Then insert at the bottom of the door. Before sliding the tube all the way into the door, insert a cap into the bottom of the tube. Then finish sliding the tube until it's flush with the bottom of the door. Secure the tube in place by inserting a self-tapping screw into this divot at the bottom of the door. Place the locking hardware onto the door, oriented like this. Then secure the hardware. Connect the two halves of the handle together, place on the front of the door, and secure the hardware. When adding the long screws, make sure they go through this bracket oriented like this. Insert a hinge tube into the opposite edge of the door making sure to leave a few inches hanging out on each end. With the help of another person, connect the floor panels together by lifting one panel up, interlocking the tabs, and setting it back down. Secure the four panels together by inserting a screw into each divot along each seam.
Your doors can go on either short edge. Decide where you want your doors and then add your strike plate to this recess and secure the hardware. Take seven of the wall panels and insert a wall support into the center channel, making sure the two holes close together go next to the cutout at the top of the wall panel. Take the corner panel labeled AGN and insert a wall support into this channel, making sure the two holes close together go to the top of the panel. Take the corner panel labeled AGY and insert a wall support into this channel, making sure the two holes close together go to the bottom of the panel. Take the window panel and insert a wall support into these channels, making sure the two holes closest together go to the top of the panel. Take the corner panel labeled AGY and insert the tabs at the bottom into the cutouts of the floor on the same edge as the strike plate. Slide the panel towards the narrow end of the cutout to lock it in place. I'm comfortable with tapping with my foot, but if you're not, use a block and a rubber mallet. Lean the panel away from the floor, fold it in half, Line the tabs at the bottom with the cutouts on the floor and apply downward pressure. If you're having a difficult time getting the tabs to lock in place, place a block under each tab individually as you apply downward pressure. Take a wall panel and insert the tabs into these cutouts and slide it towards the previous panel to lock it in place. Make sure these lines at the top of the panel are even, then secure the five screws. Add three more wall panels to this edge using the same method. You can put your window panel on either of the long edges. We're going to put ours here. Take the corner panel labeled back right and place it into this corner using the same method as the first corner. The two panels that go along this edge must be the panels that don't have wall supports on them. Take the corner panel labeled back left and place it into this corner. Add four more wall panels to this edge.
Take the corner panel labeled AGN and add it to this corner. Add the bushings to these cutouts next to the corner panels from underneath. On the panel to the right, add a wall support to this channel, making sure the two holes closest together go directly under the cutout. On the left panel, add a wall support to this channel, directly to the right of the center channel, making sure the two holes close together are at the top. There are three height settings for your shelf. They're indicated by these divots. Once you've chosen the height of your shelf, insert the triangular shelf bracket into the slits on the wall support at the same height. Insert the screw anchors into these divots at the same height as the triangular shelf bracket on each corner. Secure the shelf support brackets to the screw anchors, making sure the oblong hole goes against the wall. Unfold your shelf and lay it flat on the ground. Add the shelf supports, making sure they click into place. Place the shelf on top of the support brackets, making sure the word front is facing the entrance of the shed. Secure the shelf to the brackets with two screws each. Insert the hinge tube of the left door into this bushing, making sure the hole in the hinge tube lines up the slit in the bushing. Insert the cotter pin from the outside going in, flare the other end to lock the tube in place. Repeat the previous step for the right door. Take the gable with the curve and place it on top of the hinge tubes. Secure the gable to the wall with the hardware.
Place the gap flap over these holes, oriented like this, and secure the hardware. Place the truss onto the top of the walls and the cutout closest to the doors. While you continue to hold the truss, have someone else lift a roof panel on top of the gable and into the gutter. You'll know when the roof panel is in the correct position when this notch lines up with this alignment nub. Secure the roof panel to the wall through these four holes. If at any point you're having a hard time getting things to line up, click this link here to see a video on how to line up your roof panels. Then secure the roof panel to the truss through the bottom two holes. Then through the gable to the bottom two holes. Add a roof support to this notch in the gable and roof. Then finish securing the roof panel through the remaining three holes. Repeat the previous steps for the roof panel on the opposite side. Repeat the previous process, adding three more trusses and six more roof panels to the shed. Lift the rear gable onto the back wall, line up the holes, and secure the hardware. Now add the final two roof panels using the same method as the first two. Above the doors, add the roof cap labeled AGG to the gable. Add 
Add the roof cap labeled AFY on top of the previous panel, securing to the truss and previous cap. Repeat this process for the next three roof caps. Add the final roof cap labeled AFW to the rear gable using the same method you did for the first cap. Take a skylight, fold it in half, place it into the hole, line up the tabs with the holes, and secure the hardware. To avoid damaging the skylight, be careful tightening this hardware. Repeat this process for the next four skylights. Insert the clips into the holes in the back wall, making sure this arrow is pointing up. Remove the plastic film from both sides of the window. Insert the window into the frame, making sure this lip is at the top and facing in the shed. Insert the little screw into the hole at the bottom of the window. Attach the window latches to these divots oriented like this, leaving the hardware loose so it slides freely. Next, you need to make sure that your doors are level. Click this link here to see a video, or refer to your manual in section 12 to see how to properly level your doors. Now that the doors are level, you need to go inside, have someone lock the door, and tighten the remaining hardware on the left door. This section goes over how to anchor your shed to your foundation. Since we're inside, we're not gonna be able to do so, but it's important that you do. So refer to your manual in section 13 to see how to properly anchor your shed to your foundation. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime eight by 12 and a half foot outdoor storage shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. 
If you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other amazing products at lifetime.com.